So this is like my third time trying to do this video. I didn't want to do it from my iPhone. I bought me a video camera, but I'm not home. So I can't do it with that. Then I was trying to do it on my iPad because it's a bigger screen. But of course, my iPad kept saying I do half the video and then it shut off for me to my um, storage floor. So I'm like, freak it. I'm just going to do it from my iPhone. So anyway, I was talk I want to talk about domestic violence. Let me go over here to the slide. I want to talk about domestic violence. And I want to talk about um, you know, what leads women to choosing <laughs> the wrong man. I came from a dysfunctional <laughs> family. My mom got married after I was born, which I've learned. They divorced sometimes when I was like five or six. My father decided not to be a, a part of my life. My mom struggled to raise three kids by herself. Why my father, who was an accountant, I've learned, making good money, didn't provide no form of child support. But he had remarried and had him a son. And my father died when my brother, was five. Around the same time, him and my mother divorced and he stopped taking care of us. So I grew up without no father figure in my life. I grew up without any male positive male role models in my life. And I had no clue that I when that when I started relationships to pay attention to a man's characteristics. Not just his look and what's in his pocket, but you have to pay attention to the behaviors because the behaviors at the well will tell you a lot, especially after between the third and six months. Whew. If I get emotional, don't mind me. I got involved with a guy that I was attracted to because he looked good and he took me to the movies. He took me out to eat. He gave me some dollars. He bought me things. But there were signs that there, there were signs that he had anger issues. But I did not know that at the time, because I was what, 16 when I married, and we got married when I was like 20. Somewhere around here. And he was the type of guy when he got mad would break things. I remember buying him a watch after, you know, for Valentine's Day, and he broke it. Um, I remember him punching the walls. Yeah, breaking shit. Signs of an anger issue that's not controlled. So if they're punching walls, hurting animals, breaking furniture, that's somebody you need to think twice before being with. Because this person does not know how to control his anger. So I got involved with him anyway because I lacked the knowledge. Not knowing later on that it was going to be my face that he was going to be punching. Which happened when I was like 17. Yeah. And I told this story, so I'm not going to tell us the story again. There was no physical beating me up and giving me black eyes and busted lips throughout the marriage. But there was emotional abuse that I learned to learn, which was him with the mood swings, giving me the silent treatment, um, nitpicking with me to, to make me cry, not respecting me when I said, leave me alone. Emotional abuse. And I learned to learn that's what that was. And therapy. So moving forward, I've been watching this channel. I think the, the title of the channel is Black Girls Law, something like that. And the channel just talks the the author of the channel just talks about all the cases of black girls, you know, cases that we never heard on the news, maybe. And um, she did she does her research and she reports for us to you know for YouTube. She do YouTube videos on these cases. And a lot of cases are related to domestic violence. And a lot of cases are really the young 
women. I'm talking about 15, 16, 17 years old. And that's a problem. Because when you're 15, 16 years old, you really should not be running about having a boyfriend. You really should. You got your whole life ahead of you for that. And some of these girls get involved with these guys that are no good for them. And the thing about with abuse is they would abuse you, but then they're going to apologize to you and cry their eyes out to you how sorry they are. They might even go take you on a trip, give you some money, um, buy you some, some gifts to sh try to show you or make you believe that there was just a one-time incident and it's not going to ever happen again, which nine times out of ten is, a bo is bullshit. That's how they manipulate you into staying. Because now you are caught up with this guy. You're all in your feelings and you think you love him. And he's doing all these things to you. And the only thing he has to do is apologize and buy you some gifts. And we believe everything's going to be all right. An apology without change behavior is manipulation. An apology without change behavior is manipulation. So... As a mother, or as mothers, it's our responsibility to heal before we have kids. Start listening to men who talks about healthy relationships or what to look for in a man. Don't go to your sister, your mother, your grandmother, especially if they're not married or they're not in a healthy relationship. You don't, don't, don't go to them. You got to go to someone who knows what they're talking about. If you want to know about 